Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCC Higher Revision video. The 62 days are going to GCC Mavs exam, and today we're going to be focusing on the topic of perpendicular lines, the lines that cross each other at 90 degrees. So if we look previously at the equations of lines that are parallel to each other, the fact that they've got the same gradient, but today we're going to be focusing on perpendicular lines, lines that cross each other at 90 degrees, that are at right angles to each other. And whenever you get two lines that are perpendicular to each other, the gradients will multiply together to be negative 1. So for instance, if the gradient of 1 is 5, the gradient of the other one will be negative a fifth, because 5 times negative a fifth will be equal to negative 1. Or another way to do it is, if you knew the gradient of 1, to find the negative reciprocal of that, and that will then tell you the gradient of the other one. And that's quite useful. So for instance, if you knew the gradient of one line is equal to 2 thirds, then the gradient of the other line would be the negative reciprocal of 2 thirds, which would be negative 3 halves, and so on. So in today's video, we're going to look at perpendicular lines. If you've got the Corp Mars revision card, card number 50 is a really useful one for you as well, so that would be really useful to learn. So that's it. So in today's video, we're going to look at perpendicular lines. I'm going to go through some questions and then there'll be some for you to try as well. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at perpendicular lines. So we've looked at the equation of a line, so y equals mx plus c. We've looked at parallel lines, so lines which have the same gradient. Now we're going to have a look at perpendicular lines. So lines are perpendicular if they cross each other at 90 degrees. And if we know the gradient of one of the lines, we can find the gradient of the other one, because the two gradients were multiplied together to give you negative one. As you can see here, the gradient of this line is two, the gradient of this line is negative a half, and they're perpendicular to each other. Two times negative a half is negative one. So if you know the gradient of one of the lines, we can find the negative reciprocal of that to find the gradient of the other line. So the negative reciprocal where the reciprocal of 2 is a half, so the negative reciprocal of 2 would be negative a half. And if we had negative a half, the negative reciprocal of that would be 2. So if you know the gradient of one of the lines, we can find the gradient of the other one. Okay, let's have a look at some questions now. So here we've got write down the gradient of a line that is perpendicular to the line y equals 5x plus 4. So feel free to press pause and find the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to this line. So as you can see, the gradient of this line is 5, because it's in the form y equals mx plus c, the gradient of this line is 5. So the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to it will be the negative reciprocal of that. So the reciprocal of 5 will be 1 fifth, and the negative reciprocal will be negative 1 fifth. So the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to this line would be negative a fifth. And that's it. And also remember that 5 times a negative a fifth would be equal to negative 1. So that's our check to make sure that we're right. The two gradients were multiplied together to be negative 1. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, the next question says, write down the gradient of a line that's perpendicular to the line y equals negative a half x plus 9. So feel free to press pause now and figure out the gradient of a line that's perpendicular to this line. Okay, so the gradient of this line is equal to negative a half, so we want to find the negative reciprocal of that. Well, the gradient of this line is a negative, so the gradient of our perpendicular will be positive, and the reciprocal of 1 over 2 or a half will be, turn it over, would be 2 over 1 or 2. So the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to this line would be 2. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, so this time we've been asked to write down the gradient of a line that's perpendicular to the line y equals 2 thirds x plus 8. So we want to find the gradient of a line that's perpendicular to this line. So press pause now and figure that out. Okay, so the gradient of this line is equal to 2 thirds, so we want to find the negative reciprocal of 2 thirds. Well, the reciprocal of 2 thirds would be 3 halves, just flip it over, and that's positive, so the negative reciprocal would be negative 3 halves. And that's it, so the gradient of a line that's perpendicular to this line would be negative 3 halves, and if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, write down the gradient of a line that's perpendicular to the line 3x plus 4y plus 8 equals 0. So we want to find the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to this line. Now this question is a little bit different than the ones we've done before because all the ones we've done before were in the form y equals mx plus c. So feel free to press pause now and work out the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to this line. Okay, so to begin with, if I wanted to find the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to this line, I'm going to rearrange this to make y the subject, because if we make y the subject, we can find the gradient of this line really easily. So we want to make y the subject, so let's take away 3x from both sides of the equation, so take away 3x and 3x. So on the left-hand side, that would leave us with 4y plus 8, and on the right-hand side, with 0, take away 3x, that would be minus 3x. Now we want to make a y the subject, so let's get rid of this 8, let's take away 8 and take away 8. Now we want to make y the subject, so let's divide everything by 4, and if we divide everything by 4, we get y equals, we had minus 3x, so we're going to divide that by 4, so that'll be minus 3 quarters x, and then we had minus 8, we're dividing that by 4, so that's going to be minus 2. So that means if we rearrange this equation, we get y equals minus 3 quarters x minus 2. 
Now that means the gradient of this line is equal to minus 3 quarters. Well, we want to find the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to that. So we want to find the negative reciprocal of this gradient. So the reciprocal of 3 quarters would be 4 thirds. The gradient of this would be negative. So when we change the sign, we just get a positive. So it's going to be 4 thirds. So the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to this line would be 4 thirds. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So a line's been drawn that's perpendicular to the line y equals minus 2x plus 7. And it passes through the point 8, 3. Work out the equation of the line. So feel free to press pause now and find the equation of the line that's perpendicular to this line and passes through this point. Okay, so we're trying to find the equation of the line that's perpendicular to this line. So let's write down the equation of a line, y equals mx plus c. So we want to find its gradient and its y-intercept. So let's start off with the gradient. We know it's perpendicular to this line. So we want to find the negative reciprocal of the gradient of this line. So the gradient of this line is equal to negative 2. So if we would do the negative reciprocal, well, the negative reciprocal will be a positive, and the reciprocal of 2 is a half. So that means the gradient of the line we're trying to find would be a half, because it's the negative reciprocal of this gradient. So if we substitute that into the equation of the line, we're going to have y equals a half x, and then plus c. Now we know it passes through this point, so we've got an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So let's substitute those into the equation to find our plus c. So that means y, well y is equal to 3, so we're going to get 3, is equal to a half of x, so that's a half of 8 plus c. A half of 8 is 4, so we're going to get 3 equals 4 plus c. And then we're going to take away 4 and take away 4, so take away 4 and take away 4, and we get minus 1 equals c. So c is equal to negative 1. So that means the equation of the line would be y equals a half x, because we know it's y equals a half x. And in terms of our plus c, well, we know the y-intercept is negative 1, so it's going to be minus 1. And that's it. So the equation of the line that's perpendicular to this line and passing through this point would be y equals a half x minus 1. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, is point A has got coordinates 9, 7, and point B has coordinates 13, negative 13. And we've been asked to find the equation of the line that's perpendicular to AB and passes through the midpoint of AB. So feel free to press pause now to work this out. Okay, so if I was to do this question, the first thing I would do is I would do a little sketch. So we've got our x-axis and our y-axis. And we've got the point A, which is 9, 7. So 9 across and 7 up, which should be up there somewhere. And then we've got 13, negative 13. So it's going to be a bit further along, and it's going to be down there somewhere. And we've got this is the point A, which is A, which is 9, 7. So that's the point A. And we've got the point B here, which is 13, negative 13. So we've got the points A and B. And let's draw a line through them. Okay, so we've got the line AB, and we're trying to find the equation of the line that's perpendicular to AB. So let's find the gradient of AB to begin with. So let's do a little right angle triangle. So we've got our little right angle triangle to find its gradient. And we're going to do rise over run. So the gradient is equal to the rise divided by the run. And as you can see, this line's got a negative gradient because it's going downwards. So the rise, well, let's do the run and the rise. So we're going from 9 to 13. So we're going from 9 across to 13 across. So the run is 4. In terms of the rise, we're going from a height of 7 down to a height of minus 13. So we're going down 20. So the rise would be negative 20. So we've got the rise, which is negative 20 divided by the run, which is 4, and negative 20 divided by 4 would be minus 5. So the gradient of this line is equal to minus 5. Now we're trying to find the line that's perpendicular to this line, so we're going to do y equals mx plus c. And in terms of the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to it, it would be the negative reciprocal. So the negative reciprocal would be, well, that would be a fifth. So we'd have y equals a fifth x plus c, because the reciprocal of 5 is a fifth, and this is negative, so we change the sign to being positive. So the equation of our line is going to be y equals a fifth x plus c. Now, we know it's perpendicular to AB, and it passes through the midpoint of AB. So let's find the midpoint of AB to find where it passes through. So let's add them together and half it to find the midpoint of AB. So in terms of the x-coordinate, 9 plus 13 is going to be equal to 22, and divide that by 2 is 11. So the x-coordinate of the midpoint is 11. In terms of the y-coordinate, minus 13 plus 7 would be equal to minus 6, and half that would be minus 3. So the midpoint of AB would be 11 minus 3. So 11 across minus 3 down would be there somewhere. So that's the midpoint of AB, and this is a sketch, so that's roughly where it would be. And then our line would look something like this. So in terms of a line, we know it's got a gradient of a fifth, and as you can see, it's quite a shallow line, so it's y equals a fifth x. Now we want to find where it crosses the y-axis, so we need to find this y-intercept. So to find this intercept, well, we know it passes through the point 11 minus 3, so it's got an x-coordinate of 11 and a y-coordinate of minus 3, and if we substitute those into our equation, we can find our c. So we've got y, that's minus 3, is equal to a fifth multiplied by 11 plus c. A fifth multiplied by 11 is going to be 11 fifths, so we'd have minus 3 is equal to 11 fifths plus c. We want to find our c, so we're going to take away 11 fifths from both sides. So take away 11 fifths and take away 11 fifths. 
So minus three, take away 11 fifths. Well, minus three, take away 11 fifths will be equal to minus 26 fifths, and that's equal to C. So that means the y-intercept would be minus 26 over five. So that means our equation would be, because it's y equals a fifth x plus C, it's gonna be y equals a fifth x, subtract 26 over five, and that's it. So if you got that, well done. And that's it. So in this video, we've gone through perpendicular lines. We've looked at how to find the gradient of a perpendicular line. We've looked at how to answer some questions on it. And I highly recommend the practice questions today because the way that these perpendicular line questions are asked can vary quite a bit. It could be you're just given a line in its equation and you find the gradient of the line perpendicular to it. It's quite straightforward. But it might be that you, in fact, are given the equation of a line where it's going to be 5x plus 4y equals 17. And you've got to make y the subject, first of all, to find the gradient of that line and then find the negative reciprocal to get the gradient of the perpendicular one and so on. And then, you know, there could be even questions perhaps where you've got the radius and the tangent. You've got to find the equation of a tangent to a circle and things like that. So with perpendicular lines, I highly recommend you try the practice questions today. It's quite an important topic, particularly if you're aiming for those top grades. I think it's a, it's a topic where you want to make sure you're comfortable with it so you can apply it in those sort of quite meaty questions at the end of the paper on perpendicular lines. So keep up the hard work. You're doing really, really well. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next video, which will be 61 days to go into GCSE maths exam. See you tomorrow. Bye.